our loving and living god sent your spirit as we meditate on the scripture to open our hearts and to teach us what you want us to learn today we surrender each one of us into your mighty hand guide us and guard us and may i speak in the name of the father and of the spirit and of the holy spirit amen friends i greet you all in the name of the lord and savior jesus christ i indeed it's a great joy for me to be here this morning to worship the lord along with you and also to share the word of god with you i take this opportunity to thank god and also thank the pastor and the elders for giving me this opportunity and the church lectionary has suggested a theme for us and i have slightly modified that theme that sharing our faith in a pluralistic context sharing our faith in a pluralistic context and the passage i have taken from the gospel in chapter 4 we have heard read to us three lessons and in all the three lessons we understand the sharing of faith with people from different culture or different faith tradition in the old testament jonah was sharing his faith or his god with the people from nineveh obviously they were not israelites and in the acts of the apostles we understand the philip evangelist shared the faith or the scripture with the ethiopian minister who was from a different culture and a different religion probably and in the gospel reading we understand jesus's sharing of his faith an understanding of god with a woman from a different culture that samaritan of course samaria though they are related with jewish culture but they are different they claim that they are different from the israelites and i just want to take jesus's model for us that how we live in a pluralistic world and the people always say that in the world india is the laboratory for pluralism that we have different cultures existing together different faith system existing together different habits different food habits and different dress codes so we have all kinds of pluralism that no one in the world can understand this pluralistic tradition like indians and how do we share our faith it also poses some challenges for us to share our faith and jesus gives us a model through this particular passage john chapter 4 john as a gospel writer uh, is very unique and he is different from the other three gospel writers that that's why we call the first three gospels as a synoptic gospels they are similar but the john's gospel is very different in several ways and one of the uniquenesses of john's gospel is that john does not give only the history it's not a narrative of history what happened he always and narrates the history along with theological significance or along with some of the messages even the miracles were not presented as just miracles or or an event it was not written as a kind of history that jesus did this miracle probably in other gospels you will see that jesus performed several miracles as history but john's gospel they were presented as signs not as miracles this is just a sign that there are more things will come in the in the days to come and also he will connect that miracle with some of the complex teachings he he john's gospel if you take for example you take uh, the feeding of 5000 in john's gospel uh, chapter 6 it's a miracle of god but when after this miracle he writes that jesus started talking to them about some complex teachings and then some of them they said this is very hard teaching who will follow that and they started leaving then some of them stayed then he said that i am the living bread so you are all here to for your stomach but i am here to give you food which will give you eternal life so that was jesus teaching that i am saying statements you find only in john's gospel which most of the places come after a miracle go to john chapter 9 he heals uh, a blind man and after he heals a blind man he started teaching and then he says that i am the light of the world this is a simple a sign 
and all those who will believe in me will have light and john chapter 11 healing the uh, raising the lazarus from the dead then after that miracle he says that i am the life and resurrection it's it's only a sign that whoever believes in me will have eternal life so this is how john writes john writes the historical narratives even with the theological uh, significance and here in this particular passage also we see that jesus ministered in jerusalem in chapter 2 if you read chapter 2 was uh, 13 we understand that jesus was ministering in jerusalem predominantly a uh, jewish community or israelites community that it was during the festival season and all of them would come to jerusalem because that was the center of their worship and he was ministering among the israelite community and in john chapter 3 when you move into john chapter 3 verse 22 we understand that jesus ministered in judea and judea was a mixed culture because it was a city in the roman emperor and not only that they they most of the hellenistic group or the greek speaking group were there in judea so he was ministering among them also in judea then we move on into john chapter 4 again we read that he was ministering in samaria that's again a different group so jesus was ministering to all group and all cultures greek culture or jewish culture and the samaritan cultures samaritans were also different though they worshiped yahweh god was the same even for israelites and samaritans god was considered to be the yahweh but there were differences because samaritans did not accept the whole hebrew bible they accepted only the torah the first five books samaritans did not accept the prophetic books and the wisdom literature and the writings other books whereas the israel community they accepted the whole hebrew bible which we call as old testament and the center of worship for samaritans was not jerusalem it was a mount jerusalem so there were differences samaritans though they had a similar faith system but they are different in their cultures and also in their faith and in that context jesus shared his faith with that samaritan woman and what is that jesus said what the, what are the lessons we learn from this if at all i have to share my faith in a pluralistic context that what should i do and from jesus's model i just want to draw five lessons from this particular chapter john chapter 4 five lessons from jesus for us to share our faith for a common humanity in a pluralistic world number 1 is taking initiative took initiative jesus took initiative when we want to share our faith the initiative should come from us it's not that let them come and ask me i will share jesus did not do that jesus initiated the dialogue jesus in chapter 4 verse 7 we read that jesus was asking for water he did not probably say that come here i want to teach you my faith probably that woman would not have accepted that she would not have accepted but jesus asked for water asked for a drink it's it's a initiation he initiate something bring them into a common platform that build a relationship in other words this is an initiation to build relationship will will understand that in the in this particular passage it's an initiation De- jesus took an initiation to have an intentional dialogue with that samaritan woman jesus and jesus in- intention was not to drink water we understand that from the same passage his intention was not drink water it's not that jesus was thirsty and he was asking for water but asking water was an intentional initiation to begin a dialogue or to begin build a relationship with the samaritan woman so first lesson we learn is take initiative let's initiate to begin the dialogue we hesitate hesitation is one of the reasons why we do not initiate dialogue on god with people with whom we live or we work we always have several opportunities but we always hesitate we 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 are silent and we also calculate whether they are receptive or not and jesus did not calculate anything that he just initiated because he was 
very clear that he should share his faith with Samaritan woman. So let's initiate dialogue with the people with whom we live so that we can share our faith freely. And secondly, when you initiate, it will not go smooth. And Jesus' initiation did not move very smoothly. There was barrier. There were barriers. And Jesus also faced barriers. We will face barriers. We will face challenges. And we need to overcome the barriers. Jesus overcame barriers. That's the second lesson. Jesus also had barriers in sharing his ideas and faith. And Jesus overcame. He did not give up. When you have barrier, Jesus did not give up. He overcame those barriers. The first barrier was a gender barrier. She was saying that you are a man and I am a woman. It's not common for a man to talk to a woman in the public. It was not common. Definitely it was not common in those days. That, that became a barrier and Jesus overcame that. And second barrier is racial barrier. You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. You are, your community does not like me. Your community does not like my community. Your community does not even hesitate to call my community as dogs. How can I have dialogue with you? So racial barrier, in our context it could be caste barrier. How can I trust you? You don't belong to my caste. You belong to a different caste and that caste and my caste, they don't get along well. We have prejudice, we have bias. This could become a barrier for us to share our faith. And the third barrier we see in this passage is the communication barrier. Communication barrier, because this is common in a pluralistic uh, culture or a, uh, or a pluralistic faith system. When you have people from other faith and other cultures and the languages which we use, they may not understand. And Jesus was talking about living water. He says that if anybody drinks from me the water which I give you, you will never thirst. But that woman understood that as an ordinary water. She said that, okay, give me that water so that I need not come again and again to this well. That was her understanding. Probably Jesus had this barrier with several disciples also. When he was talking about destroying this temple and I will build it again within three days, he talks about his death and resurrection. But they do understood as ordinary temple, that a literal temple. Jesus faced that. Say, it, it's it's common that people from other cultures will not understand the language which we use. So communication is not only a language skill, it's also a social skill. I still remember one of my uh, school incidents. When I was in the school that we were prepared for the confirmation in the 10th standard. And one, one day that I didn't do the homework and the teacher asked me the reason because those days, these teachers were very considerate for religious functions, even though they are from other faith. If you give some religious reason, they will accept it. You know that when he asked me the reason why I did not do the homework, I said that I had to memorize the Ten Commandments because I was pre I preparing for the confirmation. So it was in Tamil. We were talking, the, uh, I was in Tamil medium. So he was asking me, I was saying, sir, Nathanavandu, then he looked at me and asked me, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. He was explaining to me, it's like non-details. Why do you want to memorize those things? Then I, I told him, somehow, suddenly I told him, I didn't understand Ten Commandments, sir. Hey, Ten Commandments, you are, are you talking about Ten Commandments? Yeah, Ten Commandments are Karpana and Soldra. So he understood Karpana. Say, I, I know, I'm sure that all those who use the power version of the Tamil Bible will understand. It says Karpana. But when you say that to a man from other culture, he understands that as Ten Imaginations. For him, it is Ten Imaginations of Moses. But for us, it's a commandment. It's not the language, say, we use it. Both of us were very good in Tamil. Of course, he can understand Tamil very well. I can understand Tamil very well. But even in that context, even though we were not well-versed in both my teacher and I was not very good in, not at all good in English, 
but he understood when I used the term English, that Ten Commandments. So this language barrier, communication barrier, because people use words differently in different cultures and different faith system. And Jesus faced that. He overcame. He overcame that barrier. So the second lesson we learn from Jesus is that overcoming the barriers which we face in sharing our faith. And the third lesson is that Jesus cultivated trust in her. Jesus cultivated trust in her. Trust is important. People should trust us. We should become trustworthy otherwise. Of course, the dialogue started with skepticism. The dialogue started with skepticism. Number one was actually gender. Is it, is it advisable for me to talk to a man in public? A skepticism. And second, racial. Jew and Samaritan. And then if you understand the passage, that the Samaritan woman became confident in Jesus and shared everything. That because Jesus cultivated trust in her. Jesus, in other words, Jesus became trustworthy. When I share my faith, and if people have to accept or listen to me, a continued dialogue, then I need to be trustworthy. I need to be trustworthy. Jesus developed it probably, cultivated that. And people nowadays, they say that cultivate trust, you require ability, benevolence, and integrity. Probably the Samaritan woman understood that Jesus had the ability to give something which their religion was not able to give. And benevolence, she must have understood Jesus' intention. What was the intention of Jesus to have dialogue with me? And she was confident now because he, she, she knew at that time that Jesus had good intention, benevolence. And integrity, integrity, that's very, very important. That can create, that can cultivate trust. And also compassionate compassion. Communication, compassionate communication, sorry, compassionate communication. The communication was very, very compassionate. Jesus was not trying to point out something wrong in her. It's amazing to read when, when she was saying that I have no husband, Jesus knew that it was a lie, blatant lie. Jesus knew that. If somebody comes and tells me, tells us a lie, and if I know that it is definitely a lie, immediately we'll say that, why do you tell me lies? I know that all that happened in your life, because as a teacher I have experienced that. When I was in Madras Christian College, if we, we, we have a dialogue with any student, invariably they will come up with some lies. They, they, when we ask for a reason, they will say something. Then immediately say, don't bluff me, I know. Do you think that I'm a fool? This will be our dialogue. But Jesus' communication was very, very different. When she says that I have no husband, Jesus' immediate response was, you are right. You are right. You read in the scripture. Jesus says, you are right. And then he says, yes, the man with whom you live now is not your husband. It's, it's the same communication. Jesus also says that you are telling lies, that you, you live with someone, but he, the way he communicated, actually that was the turning point. Then she started sharing more on the worship and other things and then involved in the dialogue. When Jesus said that, yes, you are right. Yes, you are right. So compassionate communication. So these things can create trust in the people with whom we share our faith. Trust is very important. Unless we become trustworthy, our sharing will not become effective. My sharing will become effective only I am trustworthy. And the fourth, facilitating them to understand, facilitating them to grow in understanding. She had an understanding of Jesus. And that, that was a change, there was a growth in her understanding. In the first verse 9, we understand that that Samaritan woman understood Jesus as an ordinary man, a Jewish man. 
Then after some time in verse 15, we understand that he, she, she called him Kurios, that master, teacher. You are a teacher. She felt that there is something great in this man. Then it goes into prophet. Verse 7, 19, she says that you seem to be a prophet. Then verse 25, she calls him Messiah. Then 42, the savior of the world. There was a gradual growth in her understanding. Probably when we share faith with people from other cultures and other faith system, we will come across this issue. There were people, they accepted Jesus as a good man, people like Radhakrishnan in India. They did not, they, they did not hesitate to accept Jesus. They did not hesitate to accept G historical Jesus. They accepted Jesus as a good man. Good man and according to their theory, a good man, because of goodness, he became Christ. That was their understanding. And there were some other group like Gandhi, they did not hesitate to understand Jesus as a great teacher. They said that Sermon on the Mount is a great teaching. Jesus as a great teacher. And some of our Islamic friends, if you share that, they do not have any issue in accepting Jesus as one among the prophets. One among the prophets. And if the tradition is from Israelite community or Samaritan community, they did, will not have any issue in accepting somebody as a messiah, political messiah or economic messiah, not a kind of spiritual messiah. A political messiah who will send out the king or emperor and establish a kingdom. But our faith is different. It's not our sharing, the intention of our sharing is not to present Jesus as a good man. Of course, he is a good man, no doubt about it. That's not our intention, ultimate aim of our sharing. It's not sharing Jesus as a, presenting Jesus as a teacher. It's not presenting Jesus as a prophet alone. Or it's not presenting Jesus as a Messiah alone. The intention of our sharing Jesus is to share that Jesus is a savior of the world, which we read in verse 42. John chapter 4, verse 42. This is the title which was given in this particular chapter. Savior of the world. So when we share our faith, we should also help them to understand Jesus from the scripture perspective. Jesus should be understood from our scripture perspective, not from the other scriptures perspective. This will come across in most of the cases when we live in a pluralistic society. And finally, Jesus motivated her to become a disciple. The sharing is not to convert people. Conversion is not the objective of our faith sharing. Our faith sharing is transformation. Transform someone to be disciples of Jesus. This is why it was not a mere conversion. Jesus did not baptize her. Jesus did not make her a Jewish woman by baptizing, but Jesus transformed her through this dialogue. She was transformed. Verse 4, uh, sorry, chapter 4, verse 39, we read that she went into the village and brought the villagers to Jesus Christ, and those villagers believed in Jesus because of that woman. They believed in Jesus because of that woman, that Jesus transformed one and she was able to transform the whole village. She even understood the urgency. Because she, she, she was so motivated that she did not spend time in drawing water. We read in 28th verse that she left the water pot. Why did she come to the well? She to draw water. She did not do that. She, she, her priority changed now. She was not doing the Martha's job. Now she is going to the Mary's, Mary's uh, uh, line. She left the water pot because she knew the prayer because Jesus was waiting for breakfast. And when the disciples come with breakfast, he would go. So before Jesus leave that place, he wanted to bring the villagers to Jesus Christ and therefore she did not waste time in drawing water and she left water pot and went away. So that's actually Jesus' dialogue. Jesus' dialogue, or a sharing of faith through a dialogue, motivated her to become a disciple. And she went into the village and brought the villagers 
Imagine, she would not have had a reputation in the village. But she went with confidence. Through dialogue, Jesus created confidence in her. Through dialogue, Jesus motivated her to bring her own people to Jesus Christ. So that's what we are expected to do in a pluralistic world. Let's take initiative so that we can share our faith. Let's overcome barriers. We will face barriers. Barriers might come in different forms. But let's not give up simply because there are barriers. Let's continue to do, have dialogue and share our faith, overcoming all the barriers. Let's cultivate trust. In other words, let's, let's become trustworthy. Trust comes only when I become trustworthy. People trust me if I'm trustworthy. There's no point in asking people don't trust me. When I become trustworthy, naturally people trust me. Let's become trustworthy to share our faith with others. And let's help them to understand God from the scripture that say how they should understand the real Jesus, the savior of the world, not partial knowledge. And let's motivate people to become disciples so that we can expand his kingdom in this world. Amen.